I'm here with filmmaker Naji Abu Noir. How does it feel to have your feature film Thebe here at the Toronto International Film Festival? It's an incredible experience. I, I never thought we'd make it to Toronto and it's it's such a great city and we're just we're really proud to be here. And tell me how living in Jordan in the desert for a year helped you really create authenticity in this film about the Bedouin tribe? I think it's really essential because making a film like this that needs to be authentic and, and not coming from that world, uh, it's not something I think that you can just imagine in your, in your head. You've already got to go down there on the ground and see what's going on. So um, it was essential for us to do that. And also to find the actors and workshop them and develop them uh, from the community was, was really important as well. And can you speak a little bit to the hospitality that the Bedouin tribe has when you know, someone comes up to them and is asking for, for help or shelter or whatnot. It's something that you've, you've got to, you, you have to go down there and experience to see just how incredible Bedouin hospitality is. You know, when, when I arrived, I, I mean, I, it was, it was almost comical at every, every hour there were plates of food coming to my door and I was invited to dinner every day. And it was, it was just insane. Uh, it, they're, they're incredible. And, uh, and it was, it was, it was one of the best years of my life. It was an unbelievable experience. And why did you choose the name Wolf or Thebe for your title character? What's the significance of that in the culture? Uh, the wolf is a very, very important animal in Bedouin culture. It, it, it's, it's an animal that can survive by itself. It can hunt by itself. So it, it's capable of sort of individual feats. Um, at the same time, it's a pack animal. And so it's loyal to its tribe, which is also very important in Bedouin culture to be, you know, it's all about family and, and, being, and being loyal to your tribe. So it, it's got those elements that, that, that Bedouins uh, love. So if I, if I nickname you a, a wolf, um, that means that you are someone who's strong, who's courageous, who's capable of doing incredible things. And for Thebe, uh, this is quite a big name to live up to, being named this from birth. Yeah, that's exactly right. You, if, if, if someone names their son Thebe, they're saying, right, you've got to... You, you've got to you've got to come good. You've got to do something good with your life. And going back to the hospitality, young Thebe basically meets his arch nemesis, and yet he still they still help each other. So, can you speak a little bit to that in the film and why it was such an interesting story for you? For for me, that's uh, the that situation was kind of the origins of a Bedouin law called Dakhil, which means that if if I come to your tent and I said that I'm, I'm coming in under your protection, you have to protect me no matter what. Uh, so, and you have to help me solve my problem. And, and literally you have to do that to the death. So if someone comes and says, well, I'm going to take, you know, Naji away and with this gun, you have to stand up and take out your gun and, and defend me. And the amazing thing about how, how, how seriously the Bedouin take this law is, even if I killed a family member of yours and you didn't know, and I came in and asked for your protection and you granted that protection, you would still have to protect me when you discovered that family member had been killed. So that it's, it's, an, it's an incredibly strict law and it's one that's held under any circumstances. And do you think the geography of living in the desert is something that's impacted this law in terms of the necessity to survive and sometimes the challenges to survive under such harsh circumstances? Absolutely. I mean, I think I think all the customs are like that, even hospitality. I think I think it's about if you're living in a world where if you get into trouble in the desert and you run out of water or you run out of food, if you can't rely on the kindness of strangers, you're you're dead. So I think everyone has to help each other out. And 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 um, and yeah, so, I, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's definitely from the environment. And tell me a little bit about your challenges shooting in the desert with all the sand and the heat. I'm sure it must have been crazy. It, it was insane and there were lots of other things like flash floods and things like that. Like we, we were show, shooting in October and, 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 and one Sikh actually flooded during the shoot. It was pretty crazy. We were scared it would be like Lost in La Mancha again, you know, that the film would never get get, 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 get made. Lots of sand, a lot of getting stuck. I got lost a couple of times and almost, you know, got myself killed because, uh, you know, just what, if you're lost, you're done for. And the, but the Bedouin knew how to track, they knew how to track car tracks as well. So they, so they, they eventually found me and saved me. <laughs> and you also cast uh, non-actors, true Bedouin tribe members. What was the casting process like? Uh, it was probably the most interesting thing I've ever done. Um, 
we would go around each of the local communities and villages and tents and we'd sit and talk to the Bedouin and see who was interested in acting and then the ones that were we'd invite to an acting workshop on the weekend and play acting games and uh, spot who who the talents were and then slowly slowly whittle that down to like 11 people and then it was an eight month acting workshop which was nuts because you were kind of I remember one point I was teaching them a, a Meisner technique exercise and I was just going I'm in, in depth <laughs> I'm in the desert teaching the Bedouin Meisner technique what is going on but they loved it and the, the, the funny thing is they said one of them used to say it's like going to therapy you know it's it's very you know I feel like a weight is lifted off my shoulders so yeah it was, it was a really good experience and the young man that you cast as Steve he's tremendous in the film he's also very like so cute so good looking what was it like working with him on set he he was uh, he, he's one of these incredible people. He was so um, sh unbelievably shy, and then as soon as you put him in front of the camera, he just you know he just he lit up the ca lit up the stage. It was it was it was it was quite an incredible thing to see that happen. Um, uh, and and he was great, apart from the fact that you couldn't give him Pepsi or, or, or Seven Up or anything like that. If you gave him a sugary drink, he'd go insane. <laughs> And you could, you, you you might as well forget like the next five hours of shooting. So uh, there was strict instructions that there was to be no Pepsi left. And he, we had an ongoing battle with him trying to find the Pepsi and you know look around. And it was it was like a little covert war going on over the Pepsi. So yeah. I guess kids everywhere just want pop and ice cream. Sugary, yeah, they yeah. want sugary drinks. Yeah, yeah. And where's the best place for us to find out more information on you and on Thebe and your other projects as well online? Uh, you can go to uh, the film on Facebook, our Facebook page, and we have an Instagram as well and a, and a Twitter account. And that's what, there'll be lots of you'll see lots of pictures of the Bedouin enjoying the festivals and things like that. So please check it out. Thank you so much, and congratulations on a wonderful film. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's great to be in Toronto. Thank you. I'm Katie Ullman, reporting for Katie Chats in downtown Toronto.